nine o'clock, right? Nine o'clock. Uh, nine fifteen. I, what time is it there? It's eight twenty. It's eight twenty there. Okay. Um, okay. Eastern Standard. It's it's uh, nine fifteen here. No, that's okay. I apologize because I'm probably waking you up right now. So. No, you're not. I, um, yeah, I, I've been up with the kids. I'm just, I'm just getting breakfast done. Uh, um, handled here. I'm in the, in the middle of cooking my magnificent breakfast that I grew. Hey, today I'm interviewing Jason Jones. Jason Jones. No, no, no. That's Indiana Jones. That's a fictitious character played by Harrison Ford. Steven Spielberg movies. Well, he does wear a fedora like Indiana Jones. Yes, but he's not Indiana Jones. No, I'm interviewing Jason Jones. Sha la 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 la, Mr. Jones and me. Yeah, Mr. Jones. Counting crows, right? Right? Yeah. I'm going to ask him if he ever screws up during live performances like I do all the time. Ding dong. Ding ding. Dork? Dick. I've got the, the, the holiday crud. This has been hanging on longer than, uh, I, than I can even remember being sick. So Last night, I felt pretty lousy. Just on my pillow, and then all of a sudden, I'm just like, oh, the drip's starting. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Here it comes. We use a, an air purifier that, uh, that kills molds, viruses. It kills anything organic in the air or whatever. Every time she has a subtle hint that I may be getting sick, She'll just, she won't even say anything to me, and it's on my side where I'm sleeping. She'll just turn that thing on. All of a sudden, I'll hear it <laughs> in the background. I'm like, okay. okay. The ear over there. Yeah. I just want an idea what to expect. We can talk about Jim Collins, incoherent broccoli. Oh, it just, it just, just ran out of your mind. Say bye-bye. Look at the cake, everybody. Isn't it beautiful? Mm, cake. Okay, now where were we? You really, why don't you go back and like get your stuff figured out, know yeah. your content, and then we'll do this again. Yeah. Okay, how's that? Welcome to episode six of DJ Center Stage TV. Today's guest spent 12 years as a non air radio personality, including a number one rated morning show and a late night talk show on WCCO Radio in Minneapolis. In 2003, he left WCCO to form an event production company that focused on bringing surprise and wonder to otherwise predictable events through storytelling, music, and theater. He has produced and presented at events ranging from his touring comedy variety show to nonprofit fundraising events to elaborate national conferences in Las Vegas. In 2010, he co-founded the Entertainment Experience, which used the coach approach to training for event producers and performers. This coaching and training company took him to Australia and the United Kingdom as it became widely known in the special events industry. Through this experience, he discovered his passion was for standing for the greatness of others, so he sold off all of his other interests in 2015 and founded The Coaching Hour. It is my pleasure to introduce to you certified business coach Jason Jones. Jason, thanks so much for coming on the show. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks for having me. This is really great. Today, we're going to discuss overcoming challenges. As performers, we face situations that we do or do not have control over. Uh, Jason, can you share a challenging event? Yeah, actually, um, I, uh, in fact, this event was my most challenging event, and I think it was also one of my best performances, which is really interesting. So uh, to have both of those happen at the same time, right? Um, and, uh, and, and it was, uh, you know, I, I kind of looking back on it, I'm always kind of amazed at how I was able to stay in the moment, because that certainly hasn't been, that's been, you know, a recent evolution, not in the, in the years of, of being a norm. So uh, it was a wedding, and it was uh, under a tent outdoors, and at about 6 o'clock, uh, the severe thunderstorms came. No, at about 5, they were saying severe thunderstorms were coming. Uh, by 6, there were tornado warnings in the area. And now we had, uh, with the venue, they, we had uh, kind of worked out a plan in terms of like, where are we gonna bring people? If they're like, tornado, where do we do? Where do we take them? So we had a, a whole plan worked out of where we were gonna take people. 
But uh, that doesn't change people feeling really uncomfortable and nervous under a tent in a storm. Uh, and so wanting to keep them there rather than going, I'm just going to get in my car and go home and wish them well. Um, and because uh, this was elaborate and there wasn't that much room like indoors for people to kind of clamor and just hot, you know, hide out uh, kind of thing. Uh, so there was a number of things that were like happening uh, throughout the night, like during toast, the rain on the tent was so loud that I had to turn up the volume max and people still had to really listen through the white noise uh, to, uh, to, to get that. And, uh, and, and everything was like, it was, it was about constantly reassuring that everything's going to be fine. We have a plan. We're monitoring the weather. If we need to move you into safety, we will let you know. So you can just like, you know, this is the adventure of a lifetime. You'll never be at a wedding like this again. Like really trying to sell them on like how fun it is to be in a tent in a storm at a wedding. Like how, when does that happen, right? So let's make this an adventure. Um, and, uh, and, I, and really that came from like uh, really coming from a commitment that I was really, really committed to this couple that I was going to um, – that I was going to make sure that the guests engaged and stayed and participated as long as they wanted, or as, as long as they would, as long as I could get them to under the circumstances. Cause the bride and groom were bummed out, right? This is kind of their big day. And, you know, and it's like, uh, you know, yeah, they can laugh it off. It was exciting, but it's by far less than, uh, less than ideal. Um, you know, the downpour was so hard that my assistant spent most of his time pushing the water, from bagging up on the tent that I was under it was right next to the dance floor under another tent, which was a join, you know, these are kind of hobbled together. Um, and so it was, uh, you know, constantly creating that reassuring. And the only thing that kept me out of freak out of like, Oh my God, this is going so bad. This is like, I don't know what I'm going to do. You know, the, the, the kind of the panic and insecurity and doubt to creep in was just like my commitment where it's like, I didn't care in that moment what anybody thought about me. Yeah. I didn't care about like what they thought about what I was doing or the approach I was taking or the work I was doing. I was just there doing the work, making sure people engaged, stayed, uh, felt safe, felt like things were taken care of, felt like they could have a good time. And I'd say, I'd say a good two thirds of that group stayed till close to the end of the night. Wow. And so uh, that felt like a huge victory for me that it was like, I told them to stay through the storm and just relax and, you know, because after a while, you start to, it starts to kind of normalize. You start being less, being freaked out about it if you, if you uh, don't dwell on it too much. So, uh, so that was my, that was my biggest challenge. And, uh, and really getting over it really was, or through it was really a matter of like really just being in the moment and as much as I could and being focused on what do we need to do right now? Like how did the, the rest of the, the event go? Well, uh, so most of the, the weather action happened. We did our, our, our grand entrance introductions, and uh, we actually didn't do a grand entrance. We did introductions at the table side introductions because okay. it just worked the best, and it was raining. So we were trying to keep everything in the tent. So we did it to just a kind of table side thing once everybody was seated. Uh, and, uh, and that was fine. That wasn't an issue. I had two bow sticks in the, uh, in the tent itself, and then I had my EV set up for the dance part later by the dance floor. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, and thank goodness I did because like, even with those sticks at, at full volume for speeches, um, it was still difficult to hear in the din of, of the downpour that have and lightning and thunder that, uh, that happened during the, uh, during the speeches. Uh, now cool thing is I always record audio of the speeches. So okay. whenever they listen back to those speeches, they'll hear all of that going on to really bring it to life, bring it to life for them. And, and everything else, everything just, everything really went pretty, pretty smoothly. Yep. Uh, I hustled like crazy to move people, to get them from here to there, to make sure they experienced everything and saw everything. Because every chance they would get, they would go run into the little barn uh, where the bar was. And so uh, then I'd go and try to, and I'd have to get everybody to stop talking in the barn and then bring them out of the barn and bring them out back into the tent and back to the dance floor area. And I just really kept working it, smiling, like, hey, joke, you know, joking about the weather, like, here we go. Now, come on, remember what we're here for, you know, and like really cheerleading their participation despite the, despite the weather. 
Um, so uh, it, uh, it 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 went it went. It went pretty well. I mean, you know, all in all, the client was super happy at the end of it. I mean, they didn't like the storm and the circumstances, but how it all ended up turning out and how many people engaged and, and stayed to celebrate, they were really satisfied with. They That's great. Really I was talking with a photographer yesterday on, on another show that I do, and, and they were talking about a situation where uh, the venue caught fire. And, wow. Yeah, and, and the bride and groom were outside, and there were fire trucks outside, and, and instead of thinking, okay, this is a terrible situation. What he did was to say, well, let's, let's get some great Im images outside with you right by the fire trucks. And, and they made beautiful pictures. Yeah. I mean, it's happening. Let's document it. <laughs> so they're able to use it kind of, uh, you know, uh, get their focus off of uh, obviously the, the bad things that are happening and, and be able to refocus it on something and making beautiful images from it. Uh, so what about a situation at an event where, you, okay, you, you talked about one where you, you didn't have control of, obviously, with the weather. How about one where you, you may have had more control of a situation, something that you did or said, uh, you know, you could have been fumbling your words in a live situation or just made an error. Tell me about a situation like that and, and how you recovered from that. Sure. Well, I, I just, uh, I was reminded when you were talking about that fire truck situation, I was reminded of something I learned from years and years ago yep. from Todd Mitchum when he was going out and training, uh, training DJs. Now he's coming back to Mobile Beat. I think he's going to be emceeing Mobile Beat here coming up. Um, but uh, he was doing really some amazing training for, uh, for DJs, especially around like shifting the, the mindset. And one of his big things was always say, use it, just use it. Whatever's happening, use it. Like use what's happening instead of trying to like go, oh, I want something else to happen or hey, let's not look at the elephant in the room, everybody. Let's look at this over here. But to actually use it, just like you described a really good example of that with like the, the place is on fire and they're like, well, let's get pictures by the fire trucks. <laughs> it's like, this is happening. Let's use this. This is what actually is your event. Not like, oh, let's just try to pretend it's something else and go try to get some fairy tale images over here, yeah. you know? Uh, and so really, really reminded of that. And especially like around, you know, if you keep in the back of your mind, like I have for years and years and years, like if something goes outside of your plan, outside of what you think should happen, use it, go with it. And then when you can come back to your plan, you can come back to your plan, but you're not going to strong arm your crowd back to your plan. You, they just won't go with you. You have to address what's there first and then invite them to come back, you know, to a certain extent when they're, when they're ready or when that other event or whatever feels complete. Um, yeah. So to answer your question though, uh, I, I, I want to describe a time that I was, uh, I was doing a show and I had, um, mispronounced, I didn't mispronounce that they actually, the bride actually gave me a different last name for what her maid of honor yep. than her last name was, Yeah, which is like weird. Right. And so like, you don't expect that that's her, her maid of honor. And so I went to introduce her when I was doing toasts and, uh, and this was a few years earlier from that, that last event that I told you about. And I said the wrong name and she really kind of gave me a snarky look and corrected me yeah. uh, with a different name. And immediately I was just like mortified and, sure. and like really, uh, I really got stuck there. Like, my head really got stuck in like, I just ruined the night. That, I, yeah, because when things like that happen, they sit in your mind and, and you, you have so much care and, and you want the event to go as smoothly as possible. And when, and when that happens, you, you do. And it's very hard to, to focus your attention away from that and, and, and move on. Yeah, I, I wanted to go up and crawl underneath my DJ booth and like hide out the rest of the night like, and not have to face anybody. You know, and, uh, and, and in retrospect, like in the guests, they were like, oh, he said the name wrong. Oh, she corrected. Okay, now what? Let's move on. They were, they were not dwelling. They were not stuck there. They weren't looking at me like, oh, you just destroyed this. Right. That was all a dialogue I was having with me. Yes. So I literally, what I then did was I shut out everybody in that room. And then I basically just spent most of the time with myself talking to myself about how terrible I am. And how I'm not going to be able to recover this. And the thing is, is your mindset and the intention you set and how you say it's going to be in your head affects how it's happening. It's going to have an effect on it. You know, it's like you will start to create that. 
you will start, you know, like you hear self-fulfilling prophecies. Yes. Same kind of thing. You're putting that intention out. People will start reacting to give you what you appear to, to want or be a pull for, you know? Um, and so like I'm looking in not only that, but in that, in that mindset, I'm constantly looking for frowns or people, people look at me if they're not smiling, are they not happy with me? You know? And, and the, the big thing with like getting caught up in that, I don't know if you're hearing this, but like, it's all about me. All about like, what do they think of me? And what do they think of me? What do they think of me? And am I there for me? <laughs> no, I'm there to do a job. I'm there to create something that this couple paid me to create and invent. Not like be liked by all their guests or be popular with all their guests or be or anything, right? I'm there to fulfill on something. But getting stuck in this worry about me and my image and my, uh, you know, and then of course, you know, the famous, this, this has probably come up in your mind and every other mind, like, why did I ever get into this business? Whatever made me think I could do this? I don't care how much experience someone has, but something bad goes wrong, your head like immediately turns on that tape. Why did I ever, whatever made me think I could do this business for 15 years, you know? And uh, it's kind of a name, but I mean, it's, it's there. Absolutely, and I wanna share something and I shared this in a group. For me anyways, when right before doing the introductions, I have a thousand things going on in my mind because it's the start, it's the beginning, uh, the energy's high, all the possibilities of the things that can possibly go wrong, just because through experience have and, and that you've had no control over, mm -hmm. it, you have a nervous feeling about it. So I think that the nerves are because you're excited about things and you want things to go the right way, the right way but also, there's those, thing, those things that you don't have control over mm -hmm. that may happen. And in the case that you described uh, with the maid of honor and, and the last name, when brides fill out information for who's in a wedding party ahead of time, they, they forget about things like, oh, well, my best friend just got married and her last name changed. And I didn't inform my MC about that in advance. But just little things I could go, there's so many, so many things that run through my mind. And, yeah. and I think it creates a... A nervousness just mm -hmm. want to make sure everything goes smoothly yeah and all those thoughts are like really pulling you away from just being present and dealing with the job you got to do right. you know and uh, and for the record i want to say too that um I, i've had i've had plenty of times over the 24 years that i worked in that industry where i've mispronounced straight up mispronounced people's names and you know i was in that particular case that was i was given the wrong though the wrong name but you know i i'm not trying to put on a good face like i've never made yeah. the, the the errors or screw ups or you know we could do a whole show on <laughs> jason screw ups and get a really good laugh about that because uh, i've got quite a catalog of them <laughs> one event in particular uh that i did i uh just purchased a new controller and, and I was going through and learning how to use this about two months before uh, I, I did this particular wedding. And, and so just learning a new controller in itself is, is something you have to become comfortable with. And mm -hmm. it was completely different for me, just learning how to do things in an entirely different way. And, and once I did, everything was all set to go and come to the event that evening. Uh, I, I put my cocktail list uh, ready to go. It was all set and you know the playlist was all set. Uh, autoplay uh, for dinner as well mm -hmm. so during dinner all of a sudden and this happened twice out of nowhere and it was fine before it sounded like a table collapsed on the dance floor a loud Ooh. pop and and everyone kind of turned around and looked like what the heck happened and so i didn't know what to do so i kind of just looked behind me too just playing silly oh. like i knew it's coming from my speakers oh no it was coming from my speakers from the software that something failed in that, so I had to update it the next day. So oh, that happened no. twice. And then after that, I, I turned my microphone on, my Sennheiser microphone, to, to introduce a moment, all of a sudden static. <laughs> oh, that's the worst. Never happened ever before. Right? I, I had no idea why that was happening. Mm -hmm. um, it turned out later on, that there was an, another company in the next room over and we were on the same frequency for, for yeah. our microphone settings. Yeah. So it interrupted it. And, and something I was conscientious of beforehand, but just one of those things that obviously at the, at the moment, I, luckily I had um, a plug-in microphone that I could just uh, you know, replace it easily with 
and, and carry on with the night. But yeah, I think it's, having it's the hand back up. plan is everything. And that's, you know, cause it's like, cause you don't, you don't know things are unpredictable with wireless and, and stuff like that. Yeah. That's, oh, and that's just like, and, and you're just like cringing, like, oh, this is, you know, and then, so how did you recover? I mean, did you, did you joke it off with the audience? Did you, uh, did you know, did you make light of it or did you get like really significant about it? Like, how did you handle it? What happened earlier and, and then thinking about at the time, I, I didn't know on the spot how to be in the moment and recover from that. So that was something I, I took and I said, okay, so if anything like this similar happens, how am I going to address this? Yeah. Like you said, put yourself with? out there and go with it because the elephant in the room, if you divert attention away from things that happen, then it's, people are going to focus on it more, I, I think. I, that's, that's my way of thinking about it. So, I mean, there's some things that you can, you know, just kind of ignore, but other things that are so apparent like that, I think you have to address it. So that right. was definitely my mistake where I didn't, it didn't ruin the night. Uh, the celebration went very well uh, right. afterwards. So, but you know, just those little things. And I, I think that you really have to recover from it and move on and, and try not to stay in your head as you were describing. Oh. Uh, and it is hard to do that, but you just have to, because it'll, it'll ruin your performance for the rest of the evening if you're just dwelling and thinking about that. And luckily, if you have an assistant with you too, they're your moral support that they could say, it wasn't that bad. You know, and if you're working alone, then you're, you're in your head a lot. So if you have that person next to you. Yes, <laughs> yes. That's, that's really great that you point that out, Jim, because that's really huge. You know, I actually got to the point too where I used to literally tell my assistants, no matter what happens tonight, I just need to hear from you that I'm doing a great job. Like I would literally ask them to just keep pumping me up throughout the night um, and be like, you know, if something happened. It's like, I don't need to hear like, oh man, that was terrible. Oh geez, what are we going to do? Oh wow. Well, I don't want any of that. I want like, wow, that happened. All right. Well, you're rocking it. You're going to recover. You're going to be great. Let's go. You know what I mean? Like to, to kind of be that cheerleader and not commiserate with you and, and like yeah. perpetuate that, you know, voice or give that any more power, but actually like, you're right. You know what? I'm, gonna, I'm just going to shake it off get out there. I got a job to do and, uh, and, and get out there and, and do it. And that makes it, it makes a big difference at that one, at that wedding, uh, that, that in the storm, um, I introduced the father of the bride and his name was Dirk. And I knew that. And I wrote it down and I even yeah. rehearsed it. And you know what I said? Can you dork, guess? dork, Dick, Dick, dork. Did everybody and here he is. Let's hear it for Dick. <laughs> and then the whole room, Roy. The whole room shouted at me, Dirk, oh. <laughs> all at once. So that told me immediately, oh, this happens a lot. <laughs> oh, my right? God. You have everybody say that in unison, like, oh, right? <laughs> so, like, in the mo and, because, and because I was in the moment, I wasn't waiting for someone to tell me I suck. I was just in the moment, you know, having fun with them. The first thing that came out of my mouth was like, well, I got that out of the way. Now <laughs> yeah. we can move forward. You know, and everybody kind of chuckled and then we just, we moved on. And then when yeah. he had the mic, he was like, thanks, Marty. And then everybody yeah. laughed, you know, because, you know, gave me a different name. And I'm like, oh, good one. Nice. You know, I mean, don't get me wrong. I was feeling a little bit like, oh, crap, the yeah. guy writing my check. I just, you know what I mean? Right. And, uh, but I gave him a joke. So I'm like, all right, everything, everything's good. Everything's good. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. A wedding I did at the, uh, in Colchester, Connecticut. It was an outdoor event, and the weather was perfect. It, it was in the no threatening weather, like a situation you described. But uh, I had the father of the bride, who I talked to ahead of time, and I was uh, getting him ready for his, his dance with a special moment with his daughter. And I said, you know, stick around, because this is going to be coming up in five minutes. And so five minutes, you know, go by. And, I, and all of a sudden... I'm introducing the father daughter dance. The bride comes walking out to the center of the dance floor and dad's nowhere to be found after approaching him and, and saying, Hey, just make sure, you know, you're here. So he had to just last minute, um, go to the bathroom. Oh so no. He was standing there and it was probably 20 seconds or 25 seconds. It wasn't a long period of time, but of course, to me, long. and to yeah. her, she was like, Oh my God, how embarrassing. And so, and this is things I tell couples in advance when I meet with them. Oh, so dad's not in another room, you know, uh, when the father daughter dances. Right, right. Well, great. It just happened. Uh -huh. So, I mean, there's things like that. What do you do? So anyways, um, how I handled that situation is, and I don't know if this was the best way or how I could have done a better job, but 
uh, just kind of raised the, the volume of the music of a song that was playing in the background. And, and I just kind of gave her the nod, like, it's okay, just, you don't have to be in the center of the room, go back. And, and he came out and it, and it was fine. It went on. But then the, uh, her, her husband came out for the mother son dance. And for whatever reason, and we had talked and discussed how this was going to go ahead of time, he came out to dance with his mom. They were dancing for about a minute. And then all of a sudden, and I, I think her health was affected in some way and, and she couldn't stand anymore. So um, his niece came up, maybe four years old, and jumped in and cut into the dance. Cute. Yeah, very cute. And so she did that for about 30 seconds, I would say. And then all of a sudden, another family member came up and cut in. Oh, so it, it was oh, this natural you. thing. Okay. Now this is getting to be something else. <laughs> <laughs> this is turning into something else. So four family members ended up finishing off that dance. Wow. And, but at the time, I, I'm like, what in the world is going on? Did, did, was this something I neglected to cover with, with the groom ahead of time? Did, or did he just forget to tell me that this would happen? It was just one of those things. It was spontaneous, and, and it oh, worked. That's great. So it was a beautiful moment. But at the time, I'm, I was thinking in my head, did, did I make a mistake and, and not know this ahead of time? And, and I didn't set this up properly. But. So what did you do? Did you just, did you do anything? Did you just let it play out? I let it play out because I, I don't think there was anything I could possibly add to that. I think I would take away. If right. Were to say something. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. I can't think of like, you know, any kind of anything on the mic would actually enhance anything about that moment. That was a, that was a really good call. That was a really good thing. You know, in the, uh, in the entertainment experience workshops, yes, there is a, as an exercise that, uh, that uh, Bill uh, teaches about uh, called clear and create. And this exercise is really fantastic in terms of getting yourself and your brain present and in the moment of your event at the beginning. It's like an exercise that clears all the junk out of your head that you're being preoccupied with, with do a setup and do I have everything and your checklist and all that stuff, like you said, that goes through your head, gets you all cleared out. You get to declare how, how you're gonna be that night. You declare how the, uh, how the event is gonna go that night. And then, uh, and then, you, and then you go and you just, you just do it. And it's amazing how effective it is to have you suddenly like, be in that game. And not be thinking about tomorrow or yesterday or right. what I have to do or, oh, will this go wrong or what will they think of me or all that inner dialogue. It really, really brings the volume down on it. Uh, Jason, what's the, the best way for people in general, uh, business uh, owners, DJs, to get in touch with you? So uh, if they have any questions about uh, coaching or anything along those lines, they can do so. Yeah, well, I invite you to visit thecoachinghour.com. Uh, I got a sign up there, and uh, you can sign up. And I, I put out, you know, uh, weekly videos every week, the Coaching Hour Minute, with uh, ways to be uh, more effective, uh, professional effectiveness, uh, be better at communication and connecting with people, uh, makes a difference in sales and just business all the way around, as well as your own mindset. Uh, one thing that people spend a lot of efforts in on. You know, we try to eat right and work out and things like that. But something that's largely ignored is your mental hygiene. Like really like your state of mind. Like how are you nurturing that and developing that so that you're more confident, present, happy? You know, it takes exercise. That doesn't just organically happen. Uh, there's a condition called being a human being that can get in the way of that a lot of the time. And we experience it often. And so, uh, so, you know, uh, looking at like, what, what is your practice to keep your mindset in a place where you can be present and deal with what's happening and learn instead of being critical and, and, and carry on and that, and that sort of thing. So the coaching hour.com, you can sign up, love to stay in touch. I put out stuff every week have live events. And if you are interested in coaching, I've got a, I got a great program that helps uh, solopreneurs in the service industry actually scale their time and use the right tools and techniques to be able to have a business where they can earn six figures without working 80 hours a week. Awesome. Jason, thank you so much for sharing just your insight. Because I think a lot of uh, entertainers and, and DJs think, oh, other people don't experience these obstacles. Mm -hmm. And so when you're able to uh, see other people are and, and see how they recover and overcome them and, and make a situation better, I think it makes everybody feel good. Yeah. Oh, well, right. Because it's like, you know, if somebody has accomplished it something, that was a process to get there. 
for sure. They had their own time of growth. And, you know, when you're in your time of growth, I think a podcast called Epic Fails would be an awesome, <laughs> awesome, entertaining, fun, you know, like Epic Fails and what you learn from them, right? Yeah. So it's about like, oh, you know, this is the I suck show. It's just like, so this is what happened. And this is what I really learned from it. And this is what dramatically changed. Because it's when things that go, the biggest improvements that happen in your company and your performance are the result of the worst nightmares that have happened. Yes. Yes. I can't agree more. It happened to me when I've been mortified the worst at like things that I let slide. I didn't prepare enough. I wasn't ready. I, I didn't have a good mindset, all that stuff. I learned the most. And I actually coming out of that then, you know, had a big arc up of improvement in my, uh, in my performance and, uh, and in my business. Absolutely. Jason, so great talking to you again and, and seeing you. Uh, that's all the time we have today. Tune into our next episode. Thanks a lot. Awesome. Thanks, Jim.